Hello, welcome. Hello, Jill. Thank you. Very lovely to have your first exhibition here. First, yeah. yeah. it's exciting. It's exciting. It is exciting. Mm -hmm. And just check this room out. All these mm -hmm. beautiful small pieces that are done to celebrate your 50th year of being on this planet. Yes. Half century. Yeah, congratulations. So yeah. you sat in Italy, didn't you, and stitched these? I made all of these, actually maybe about one or two in Italy. And um, I hadn't started out planning on, on doing 50. I did two or three just to check things out and then had a bright spark that actually, I'm 50 this year, wouldn't it be good if I did 50? For, for my 50 years and um, before I know it, I was, knew it, I was in the, the thick of things and having to keep on going. Um, all the work is based on my, on my travels, travels around Morocco, around Italy. Um, there's one or two that are Yorkshire where, I, where I'm from but mainly Morocco and parts of Italy. And I started with a sketchbook full of drawings, colourful drawings, inspired by Morocco in February. And uh, Morocco was a life-changing experience for me. It's, uh, before that, a lot of my work had been, col had been colourless, almost. It had been very monochromatic. And then the Moroccan colour hit me like a, like a truck. And um, just can't get enough of it now. So these pieces are very vibrant, very colourful, completely new palette, new collections of combinations of colours, things that I haven't really been used to before, in, which is incredibly exciting to, to start to play with those and get involved. So the first one, these are in number of doing them in order? Yeah, they're, they're in chronological order at the minute, yeah. So they've changed a bit from the first one, do you think? They have changed a lot, the way that I have viewed the work. So initially I was um, taking, a, taking a scene, taking a, a drawing of the scene and um, translating it into, into stitch. So I'm painting and drawing with stitch and thread. But towards the end, it got, it got more and more difficult to do that. And there was different phases through the work where they become quite illustrative, more illustrative. Um, but towards the end, the last kind of six, seven pieces, it was quite a struggle to actually find the drawings that I wanted to inspire the stitch pieces. And I was drawing each day in order to be able to have the next piece of work to stitch from. Um, but the last six uh, tend to have figures in and they, they become much more narrative. There's a story there, there's a connection with people and there's a memory for me and for anybody else who views them, put themselves in that situation and, and recall a scenario when they were with a particular group of people or a particular scene. But for me, there's a real narrative, and that's the first time that's happened for me in any of my work. And it's happened completely unconsciously. It didn't plan it. It was a natural flow. I think the intensity of working in this way developed something new. Are you going to continue uh, where you've left off on number 50, which is a back view of you walking along the road? Are you going to continue and push this a bit further? I really was surprised by the whole narrative thing coming forward, so it's definitely an area that I want to, to continue with because I knew, I worked mm, in partial isolation creating a lot of these pieces. I knew that I needed an intense body of time and I knew that that intense body of time cre creating and making would spark something new. So I would be foolish not to pursue it. Mm. These works work beautifully together, but when you step up close and look at each one individually, the mark making that you are using mm -hmm. with your thread is extraordinary. Do you want to talk a bit about this, the techniques that you're using to get such perspective and get such line and form in each of these pieces? Well, um, as I said previously, everything comes from a, from a drawing. 
a drawer with um, oil pastels and oil bars and um, Karen Dash cranes and they give certain qualities of line and they're the lines I'm trying to depict when I stitch. I use free machine embroidery and I, instead of maybe as a painter picking up a heavy brush and a thick brush um, with some pink paint, I would pick up a thick pink thread and stitch with that. Um, I have the feed dogs down on my sewing machine, I have a really thick needle in the machine and um, I sew as if I draw, exactly as if I draw, but I'm working with incredibly thick threads through to incredibly fine and I'm allowing the colours to mix together on the surface of the cloth, so I like to call it tactile pointillism, where all the colours mishmash together so that from a distance you'll, you'll see the blended colour but when you get up close you see the, the separate notions. There's also a lot of texture in there because I often work from the wrong side of the fabric, the wrong side of the piece of work and um, change the tensions around a little bit on my sewing machine so I get lots of loops and textural qualities in there. And um, that's kind of really important to me that I'm not in full control of what I'm doing while I'm sewing. I like to give over some of the responsibility of the work. It's not that I'm lazy, it's just that I'm trying to be democratic yeah. in that um, all of the different elements of my work, the threads, the fabric, the colours, the sewing machine, the day that I choose to work on, uh, the mood that I am in when I sit down to work. All these things play a part in the chemistry of each piece of work and I like to think of them as an orchestra and I am the conductor. I've brought everything together on that particular day and in order to allow all those different parts be their best and to help me then I have to let them sing and I have to let them shine and I have to bring out the best properties in all of them. And when I do that and when they all come together, it harmonises beautifully. I hope that's my intention. Um, so I'm still the artist, but everything is flowing around me and I'm just kind of managing it. The other thing I think that's wonderful to know is that you use old sewing machines that might be a $50 old machine. You yep. don't need the fandangled new machines. You don't need a fancy new machine. I have to admit the big machine I've got is, is a giant and um, it's a Janome HD. But it's only a straight stitch machine. It doesn't have any extra stitches. It can only straight stitch. I've taken the teeth out of it, so it only free machine embroiders. So any machine that where you can drop the teeth and put on a darning foot can do this. Yeah. As well as these beautiful stitch pieces, you've made these glorious scarves. Yeah, the scarves are kind of a um, counterbalance to the to the small stitch work. And there's one being thrown at me, thank you. They're, they're kind of a counterbalance in that it's very intensive work. It's very static, intensive, although physical work making the stitch pieces. Um, and my body needs a physical break from that sometimes. And the, the, the close vision um, and intense vision that I need, needs my eyes need to relax. And um, so I use the same drawings and um, the same original source material to inspire these scarves and I paint um, with, with dyes, thicken dyes and paint with dyes, draw and paint the, the thickened dyes as sometimes landscapes, sometimes, well depends on the scene. Um, but they are very fine, they're very lightweight 
Do you know what inspires you other than life itself? Um, it is really life itself. It's things that I see around me, things that catch my attention, emotion and energy and adrenaline in situations. And I think when um, my sense of adrenaline is heightened, I'm more aware of what's going on, uh, or I'm, I'm more, my senses are just more alert, and so I'm more captivated by things. But things have to captivate me, they have to grab me for, for whatever reason, and I can't always initially describe what that is, it's an instinctive thing. And has your uh, part-time move to Italy assisted in that? Undoubtedly, I mean a new environment, um, new light, new scenery, new excitement all the time um, really has helped. Italy gives me an opportunity to have concentrated, slightly isolated times by myself to establish a studio and a working practice and really kind of engross myself in my practice there and I have set up a lovely studio space um, in our home. I, our home there was an old school so it's ideal for teaching and I run summer schools there every year um, to help celebrate what's in the local area culturally and um, to, to also teach. I've, I love teaching. I've always taught. I started teaching when I was still a student at Goldsmiths University and um, my teaching practice and my creative practice have grown side by side so I love sharing what I do and helping to encourage others to um, see things in a new way and explore different textile practices. You've certainly got a large reputation as an excellent teacher so I can only encourage people to go to Italy and uh, spend a week or so with you in your it experiences is, there. Thank you. It's a gorgeous place and I genuinely love it. Absolutely love it. So they just contact you via your website? Yeah, they can contact me via my website, theonswift.com. <laughs> I'd be interested to see when you next come back and exhibit here in a few years, uh, where you'll move to. Do you think you constantly reinvent yourself or do you just build on the work that you do? I've heard a few people say that I reinvent myself quite a bit and I'm glad that you mentioned coming back in a few years because that would be great. Um, I don't necessarily see that reinvent myself, I just move quickly. I'm always thinking about the next thing and I've got ideas going forward, going forward. So I'm just fast on my feet. Really? You are indeed, because you've got Wonderlist and it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> I have this new app called Wonderlist and it supposedly tries to keep me organised or it just reminds me of all the things that I'm forgetting. <laughs> you can't keep up with you, the poor app, it keeps crashing. <laughs> so where to now for you in this next six months to year? What does this look up for? Um, well, I've got some more teaching to do in Australia. Um, for the next three or four weeks and then by the time I get back to the UK it's nearly Christmas but I've got some solo shows to put together in the UK and more projects to do in Italy um, and hopefully actually the UK. Um, I really enjoy community orientated projects so that I can get to know more people so that there's an opportunity to bring people together around textiles for more people to celebrate textiles and um, kind of explore some of the, the beneficial attributes of working together, working creatively. Um, so I'm hoping to get more and more of those in there. And it was wonderful having you part of Fearless Flowers yesterday. I really enjoyed that. I love that exactly that type of group ladies sitting around sewing talking enjoying one another's company supporting one another in what whatever way they yeah. can it's yeah. beautiful so fearless flowers is about um raising awareness and money about mm. ovarian cancer mm. thank you very much it's so lovely to my have you my pleasure here. thank you so <laughs> much for having me it's been a joy it's a treat <laughs>